Welcome to our molecular biology lab. Let's go inside. In here is our wet lab. That means that we do all of our reactions involving DNA extractions or RNA or protein work, as well as mixing different chemicals in this room. We have a lot of equipment that we use to spin things down, to mix things up, heat them up, and also just to measure and pour. Every scientist has a set of pipettes that we use to measure out really minuscule amounts of fluid that we can then put into our mini reaction centers like these Eppendorf tubes. Since we work on such a small scale in biology, that's all that's really needed for us to mix our reactions or do our experiments. Also in our lab, we have a variety of different fridges and freezers at negative 20 degrees, four degrees, and in our other room, negative 80 degrees. Different chemicals need to be kept at different temperatures in order to help stop degradation or just to store them and keep them fresh for a certain amount of time. And then if you come this way, this is our gel imaging room. Being molecular biologists and working with such small molecules, we use something called a gel in order to visualize what we're working with. We make them and run them in these different apparatus and we use stains in order to visualize the molecules that we're seeing. Some other machines that we have in this room include our PCR machines, which are basically like Xerox copy fax machines for DNA. Our nanodrop, which we use to measure the concentration of what our DNA samples are. And this apparatus, which we use for photography of all of our gels. Welcome to our chemical room, where we store all of the different chemicals needed for all of our different experiments. This is also where we mix all of our different reagents. We weigh certain things out on a scale, and then we use an automated stirring machine to mix in our different powders into liquids. It uses a little stir bar like this and a magnetized bottom. We can crank it up and get things stirring. In here is our tissue culture and bacterial systems. Here's our hood where we keep everything aseptic and clean in order to work with bacteria or with very sterile samples. Here are two of our really large negative 80 degrees Celsius freezers, which we use for more long-term storage of DNA or different tissue samples. Over here are our growth racks, where we grow everything from blueberries to basil to hops and different succulents, even Venus flytraps and coleus. We start off tissue culture and plant regeneration by growing our plants in a sterile environment, just like in these little Tupperware containers. This plant is not contaminated by any other bacteria or anything outside in the air. Next, we cut them up into teeny tiny squares and we place them on a plate that has growth medium and different hormones on it to mimic different stages of development and we create something called a callus that is very similar to a tumor or maybe an embryo before it becomes differentiated. Next, we switch to another medium that promotes shoots to grow. On here, we see the brown callus and the shoots that are now growing up out of it. This is so cool because instead of growing plants from a seed like we normally do, we can make a clone of a plant by cutting up a tiny piece of its leaf and mimicking different developmental stages. In this room, we have a bunch of different microscopes that we use to visualize the small surfaces that we work on. Here is a dissecting microscope and here is a confocal light microscope. Both of these microscopes have the ability to excite different particles and produce a glow, which is something characteristic of different proteins that we study. And now for the most expensive pieces of equipment in our whole lab, our GCMS and our LCMS. The GCMS is 
a large analytical chemistry equipment that we use to study the different compounds that make up flavor and aroma, and the scents of different flowers, and the taste of strawberries. This part is the gas chromatography, where we can separate out the different compounds in a sample. Then each compound makes its way to the mass spectrometer, which can ID each compound by a fingerprint. Down here is our special science facility. This is where we do all of our experiments using multicolored LED lights. I'm going to show you a couple different rooms. The first room we have set up as being four different light treatments. If you come on in, what you can see is each box has a different colored light and we would place different flowers or different samples inside of each light box and do our treatment. So we have red, blue, green, and yellow down there. This is a second spectral science room. In this room, we have smaller light chambers and each light, each light chamber is a different amount of red light. So in this particular example, I have petunia flowers being treated under red light. So down here is our LED panel with the lights underneath and the flower samples are down here being treated for 12 hours of red light. We have a couple different types of greenhouses down in our facility. This one is our smallest type, but it's the most environmentally controlled. Inside of our greenhouse is both air conditioned and heated to keep our flowers always at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you come on in, you'll see on this side we have beautiful growing plants. These are all petunia flowers. We use the purple ones for different types of experiments that we use the white ones for. The white ones are extremely potent and they're very, uh, very bald, they're very smelly. So we use these for all of our bald treatments. 